Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today in art class, we're gonna be learning about Katsushika Hokusai. He was an artist born in 1760 in a little fishing village on the coast of Japan, and the village is now called Tokyo. He is famous for his series of prints called the 36 Views of Mount Fuji. And you're looking at one of the views. And this painting is called Under the Wave of Kanagawa. And if you look closely, you will see Mount Fuji in the background. You can see it's the snow-capped mountain here. And this is the actual view from Tokyo Bay. So if you're in Tokyo Bay today and looking out, you'll see something very similar to this. Looking close again, you're gonna be seeing some fishermen. Tokyo used to be a very poor, small fishing community. And if you look, you'll see the men in these fishing boats. Every day they would go out past the bay and they would go into the great seas and they would fish for their community. And they would bring back the life staple, the food for their community. Fish was one of the staples that they relied on for uh, nutrition. And the fishermen would have to go out and face the dangers of the ocean. And Hokusai in his woodblock print kind of shows you how fierce the ocean can be when he uses these kind of claw-like or hook-like lines in his uh, white cap of the great wave. If you look close, they're kind of a, if we're looking at the shape, it's like a backwards letter C or almost a bit curved like a banana. But it gives the illusion of like the claw, like the wave is coming down and threatening the fishermen of the sea. It's showing the great force of nature. And that's what we're gonna be making today. We're gonna to be creating a great wave and then you can choose your boats that you'd like to put in. If you'd like to put boats, you can always uh, put in a surfer or yourself surfing the great wave. Uh, but we're gonna be learning about how to create waves and a white cap and give some feeling of movement to our water. And Hokosai uses a lot of line to create this movement and we're gonna start on that. First off, I wanna show you how he created this. Hokusai, and as I said before, this is a series of prints. There's 36 views of Mount Fuji, so he created 30, 36 different um, art images of Mount Fuji. He was studying this sacred mountain, and he carved this, all of them actually, out of wood blocks, and the wood that Hokusai used um, in Japan is a cherry wood. This wood is just a piece of plywood that I carved. You can see on the back, it's just a layered plywood. But what the artist does is it takes, uh, they take chisel tools or wood carving tools and they carve out into the wood uh, lines, patterns, shape. Uh, they carve out the artwork and then whatever is not carved is what's going to be printed the relief part of this, the part that sticks up. If I hold it sideways, you might be able to see it a little bit better. The, the white part is the part that the ink did not get to. And the raised part is the black, is where my black ink laid on top of the wood block. And what artists do is after they've carved it, they bray it with a, uh, they roll it out with a brayer, and then whatever is inked, that's the part that will get printed. The, art, the artist takes a piece of paper, puts it on top of the wood block and rubs it and then pulls this off. It's just like the process of when we do stamping. You ink the stamp, you stamp, and you pull off. This is just a larger scale, basically, stamp. And Hokusai, when he did this, he would need a new block, a different block carved for every color. And you can see here, he has several different colors of your blues different values, and then he's got a little bit of coloration of light tans in the boat. And then there's that light tan again in the sky. And then the last block that's printed is 
the black block on top, which is a very delicate carved line. That's why the artists used cherry wood so that they could get, cherries a very hard wood, so that they could get the thin details in the lines. But we're gonna go ahead and sketch out um, Hokusai's wave, and then we're going to, um, I'll show you a simple one way of coloring in the wave. We're gonna be using just regular markers and adding water to them to create some type of a watercolor paint. The effect will look similar to this where you see the watercolor is bleeding into the other colors, creating new values. And we're gonna be working up cool colors today, using cool colors. Uh, we're gonna take a piece of paper first. You wanna hold it so that the long side of your paper is closer to your body. So the long side. And when we hold this paper, this is called horizontal. So holding your paper horizontally we're then going to start off with his curve of his wave. Um, and you can see the, the, the larger wave is going to take up, we're going to go a little bit past the halfway point of our page, and this is going to be the subject matter of our painting. So we're going to drop down, we're going into the left hand corner, measuring four fingers down, and I'm just going to put a horizontal line. So left hand corner, four fingers down, a small horizontal line. And then to cre create the great wave, we're going to gradually come up and let's plan our design in our mind first before we go ahead and mark it. We're gonna gradually come up here to the top in a, in a slope. It is going to be a diagonal slope and then it's gonna slightly curve round. So we're going heading up diagonal, just kind of like a drawing, a very gentle curve. And we come up and stop before we get to the actual top of the page. And then I'm gonna round off. And I'm gonna slightly dip down, not very far. And if you were to measure your page, here's my halfway mark. So I went quite a ways across that page. We're gonna skip down two fingers now. From the top edge, you can see how my fingers are touching the end of my line, drop down two and jump in to maybe your second knuckle. So if you jump in and just make a little guideline. So my fingers are at the end. I went not my first joint, my second joint, my second knuckle in. And I'm gonna do a slight curve, kind of, I'm doing it like the letter C, a slight curve in, then I'm gonna go down, slightly. Slight curve in, down, and don't complete the full C. Now, we're gonna plan this. We want this to come sloping gently, so if you plan in your mind and visualize, you'll get the line correct sloping down, and then this is gonna form the next swell of the wave in front. So then I'm gonna be coming up a little bit. So watch me first. Down, over, it's not quite a, a swell I want, so I'm gonna just redraw the line. Down, over, and back up gently. Anytime you make a little mistake, just redraw it right on top. This line will be hidden with all our art. This is something that you should not worry about or even erase. From here, we're going to do some of the claw-like uh, white caps that Hokusai created. And to actually do Hokusai's uh, white cap, what I do is I put a lot of backwards letter C's and I vary them, some higher, some lower, some smaller. And you don't wanna come way off the top of this wave. Look at, how, look at Hoko size. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of these backwards letter C's. I'm gonna now come to the top of my wave here because then it gets thinner. It gets closer, the, the white cap gets closer. This is where it's actually falling over and about to break. It gets closer here, backwards letter C's. And then it gets wider here. So I'm gonna come down with some backwards letter C's. And then it gets closer as it, you reach the edge of your page. Do three or four 
oops, three or four letter C's here. And just continue making your letter C's. Now, if you want to make those hook claws, you can leave it like this. You can make the hook claws if you'd like to show that fierce power of nature. Just come back and connect them all. Connect them with more claws. You can even connect them with like W's. You can even connect them with U's if you'd like. This area. When we add some color to this, it'll all just fill together anyways. You can leave it open and fluffy. You can even put a few up back here, as you see. Now, you can work on more of this later, but right now I wanna get to what I call the muscle of the wave or the power of the wave. And, and what we're gonna be doing is it's this part of the wave. This is when you're at the beach. This is the strong part. When the light, airy stuff hits you, it's it doesn't really, uh, you know, it just kind of goes right by you. Though it's it's uh, not as strong. But if this part of the wave hits you there, this is stronger, and this could even knock you down. So that's why I call it the muscle. We're going to be doing some lines that are tracing the edge of this curve. So I'm just going to follow this curve and I'm keeping it equal distance and then I'm coming through and as I come into this area I'm getting a little bit closer. So I'm coming down following the same curve and these this is just the this will create the movement in the wave these lines here and then I'll continue down in here too with some of these lines following that curve now you can actually almost see now some movement here just from the lines I drew. This wave is actually in what we call the foreground, which is the middle of our page or the middle of the landscape. The very background in our painting is actually Mount Fuji. So let's stick Mount Fuji in. And here we, if we go below the white cap, and I'm just gonna drop diagonally below it, and I'm gonna put a, a very tiny horizontal line. And then I'm going to make a diagonal slope coming down, just touching the wave, and a diagonal down touching the wave. Mount Fuji is actually a volcano. And so we're gonna put some of the white cap snow on top of this, that's why it's triangular. And we're gonna just come up with some diagonal lines and we're gonna do jagged lines coming up back down, up again, and you can put in as many as you, of these as you want, as many as you can fill in. And if you wanna put a little bit of crevices coming off the top of here, you can. Uh, later on, you can you know, decorate that volcano. You could even make it an active volcano. It's up to you how you wanna to add to your picture and create your own landscape. It could be imaginary or realistic, it's up to you. Um, I want to do now the next step after we've done our background, foreground, I mean middle ground, background, middle ground, now we're going to create what we call the foreground. And that's going to be the closest to us and it's going to be in front of us. I'm jumping up about three fingers from the bottom and I'm going to put a horizontal line to start me off. And then I'm going to go over slightly and I'm just gonna bring a gentle wave up, come up to your lines, cap it off, kind of like a mountain, and then gently, slowly slope down, down, and then we're gonna bring it back up again to create another formation of another swell. So this is a smaller swell here in the foreground and then in our middle ground, we have the largest wave. And then we have Fuji in the background. Now we're gonna do the bottom the same way we did the top. Now, if you stop for a moment and watch me, I'm just gonna do it quickly. And then I want you to do this on your own. So I'm just gonna add some of my C's and backward C's in here. I'm gonna create an area where it comes down thicker and then I'm gonna come up closer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some of these, it's kind of like an upside down letter U on, it, on its edge. 
these are kind of like the trails of the froth. Or it could almost be, if you turn it this way, it's like a backwards letter J, these hooks. And I'm just gonna bring these lines down. This is where the white, I'll show you on Hoku size. You can see how it, the white caps kind of trail in. This is the froth kind of dissipating into the water and dissolving after the wave has hit. And then it's the formation of the new wave. But it forms almost a upside down or diagonal U shape here. So the white would continue all in here and then this would be the dark down in here. Now I'm gonna leave this space blank here because if you want to put a boat in, you can stick a boat in. I'll show you on this example. Some students cut out, actually, after they watercolor painted it, we cut out and added boats on top, added fish later, or you can draw your boat in if you don't want a boat. Like I said, you can put surfers, swimmers, etc. If you want to put a boat in, um, you can do that later. But I want to show you now how we're going to create watercolor effects with markers. If we take, and these are just older markers that I had in the art room, and I'm just going to trace the lines of the water. And I want to keep my markers going in the same direction of the water, the flow of the water. And I'm using different values of blue. You can even use values of green. Here's a blue-green. And I'm just tracing my lines that I have here. I'm not coloring in the entire area. If you want to put a few lines in this froth area or white cap, and then maybe trace the edge of the white cap. And again, using darker values and different values, lights, mediums, darks. And I'm just like I said, they're older markers. If you look, some of this is even dried out. That's no big deal because what we're gonna do in this technique is we're gonna add water to this and it's gonna kind of dissolve and melt these markers. I want this to be a little bit darker down here in these caps. And then again, the white cap I want on top. Oops, this should be done like this. These should be my curves of my wave because the lines need to be drawn in the direction, the way the water is going and moving. And the line of your design is actually what's creating the movement of the water. So that's important to get the right curve in here. Okay, now once you're finished, now of course I'm not completely finished, but once you have finished, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using a, uh, just some regular water, and we're gonna use um, a brush, just a simple clear water and brush, and have, a, you know, you wanna wipe the edge so that it's not huge puddles, and then we're just gonna moisten this with water. And what's happening is this will create a melting effect. It will melt and start dissolving some of that marker. And we can actually take some of this that's on our brush now and move it in to create some shadows that Hokusai used in the white caps. We want to keep most of the white cap white, but we can stick in some of this light color where we get from the, the marker down here. I'll show you up close how we did the shadow. You see how it's this blue color, light, light blue? That's the shadow in the white. So that's important to put in too. Artists use different values to create more interest and depth in their painting and to create, to make it more realistic. You can see how when I touch the blue marker that was dried out, I'm moistening it and filling it in and I end up with this beautiful, nice blue. So this is something you can do. If you wanna draw with your old markers, it's a way of using up your old markers. If you have old dried up markers, at home, you can also just re-moisten them by dipping them into water, just about one second into your water. I'll show you here. I'll just take this, dip in, pull out, 
And this actually re-moistens my blue there so that it's a stronger value. Um, and I can continue working that way as well. And I hope you have fun creating your great wave. And I wanna show you what happens after it dries. Sometimes you get this really cool, beautiful look, which is called bleeding. It's where one color flows in and creates these kind of expanding lines. You can see some of the turquoise and free-formed edges. It's the color seeping into the paper and into the other color and into the water. The water will draw the color to itself as you place it on. And this is a real exciting um, thing to watch and technique as the color just kind of bleeds over. And it looks, it gives a beautiful, simple effect. Um, thank you for watching. And if you like the videos, please comment and subscribe.